Key value stores are a fundamental component in most modern applications. They are widely used for user session management, feature flags, spam filtering, and really whenever data needs to be stored temporarily. But they can also be used to power so much more. In my opinion, Cloudflare KV is one of the easiest caching solutions to set up and use, especially if you are already building on Cloudflare workers. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can get started with Cloudflare KV for free. I'll walk you through a few of my own real-world use cases that utilize KV, and then we'll dive a bit deeper into how KVs work under the hood so we can better understand the benefits and trade-offs of building with them. To get started, you can create a free Cloudflare account, go to the Cloudflare dashboard, go to Storage and Databases, go to KV, click Create. You can give your KV cache a name. Once you create it, you'll be able to access this ID. After getting access to, to this ID, you can head over to your wrangler.toml file or your wrangler.json-c file and add that ID in the binding name in your KV spaces. If you're not familiar with this process, I have a video on how to deploy to Cloudflare workers that goes into detail. From here, you can run the CF type gen command. This will generate the types. And then from there, you'll have access to your KV binding, which I've named cache in the context of your request. Okay, let's get into a real world project that's actually using KV on the back end. So I've been working on the SaaS product that helps local businesses increase the number of reviews that they, they get on Google. And many of these businesses have requested this feature for widgets to be embeddable on their website that show the reviews that they've gotten. So there's this kind of, there's this cool little carousel feature and there's this like widget pop-up that pops up at the bottom um, right side of the screen. And then it can be installed on a website by just embedding a script in the, the header of the site. And what we have here is the ability for users to go ahead and change the style of the review card. And then they go ahead and they save those changes. And then the next time that they visit this page, those changes that they saved from the last time should be saved. Now, essentially what I'm doing on the back end is whenever this save is, is hit, I'm calling this TRPC route. It's called save widget config. And all it's doing is it's taking that widget config. I have access to the business ID and the widget type. And that's going to become the key. And this is the uh, Cloudflare cache. So you can see that we have the context, the EMV, so the Cloudflare environment, the cache object that we've defined, and this put method, which is just going to be storing that object. Um, and then I'm stringifying that entire uh, config object because Cloudflare KV has a few different types um, that can be stored, and a string is one of the types that can be stored. Um, just a normal JavaScript object is not one that can be stored. Um, and then in terms of saving, that's literally all it takes. It's just this super simple block of code where you are specifying a key, you're throwing in whatever object that you have, and now it's stored. So it's insanely easy to implement this with Cloudflare KV. I think it's like probably the easiest cache out there to, to build upon. And then when this page loads for the very first time, it each widget is going to call this get widget config, which is basically doing the inverse of what we just saw. It's taking a business ID and a widget type. It's creating that key here. And then I'm basically specifying the type JSON. So on a git call, so this emv cache git, you can specify the type JSON. Um, and when you specify the type JSON, there's JSON parsing that's happening behind the scenes. So this type that you get is essentially going to be of the type JSON. So you won't have to do like a JSON parse widget config. And there's a few different retrieval types that you're able to specify here. Um, JSON is just one of them. Then I'm just passing it into a Zod schema. So it, it'll be type safe here and I'm returning that to the UI, and then I'm able to render the last known the last known color that, or the last known style or config that's been saved. Now, once I rolled out the KV store in the backend for saving the, the widget configuration, I realized that there were other things that I could use the KV store for to help streamline this development process. One of those things is this more complicated component, this carousel, where you have information about like the total number of reviews that a business has, you have the link to their Google Maps profile, and then also you have all of the most recent reviews that the business has received. And this is multiple queries against a database to pull all this information in. So this is another scenario where I don't necessarily want to run queries against the database every single time this component loads on a user screen, especially if the business has a website that has really high traffic. Um, so this is another great example of where you can use KV. So essentially what I'm doing here is I have this simple Hono route where I have a Git request or I have a Git route that is hitting this reviews endpoint and is passing a business ID. And then I'm going to the cache for the very, the very first step is basically I'm going to the cache and I'm saying, does this business have any data cached already? If so, I'm going to return it. And then I also version it here just in case I make any like major changes on the back end in terms of the data that's stored. Um, but that's, that's neither here nor there. 
Essentially, so this is kind of the happy path where if a user hits this endpoint, there is data in the cache, it's simply returned to the UI. And then this operation is really quick. Like we're talking 60 milliseconds. It can be really, really fast, especially if the user is really close to the worker and the, the store that's being accessed on the back end. Now, if there is no data here, essentially what I'm doing here is I have three different queries that fire against a Postgres database. And these are all being made at the exact same time. This data is being returned. And I'm calling that reviews here. And then all I'm doing is I'm basically saying in the background, this execution CTX wait and tell is basically saying we're going to run this asynchronous task, which is a put. And notice specifically, I don't have a wait here. I'm not awaiting this operation because it's going to, it's going to manage the IO of this for us on the back end. But I'm basically passing this put method where I'm storing based on the business the data that was just retrieved from the database. And then I'm passing this expiration TTL. TTL stands for total time to live of five hours. So basically what we're doing here is we're gonna store this data in the KV store for five hours. So every single user that makes a request is going to hit this cache and those requests are gonna be very, very fast until five hours. And then five hours is kind of arbitrary just because you know we're, businesses don't typically get tons of reviews like every 30 minutes or every hour or so you know, you're most likely going to be pulling the most recent data. And then if it's not the most recent data in this use case, it doesn't really matter because there's just like a five hour delay for when businesses are going to have the most recent reviews displayed on their website. Um, so then you really only have like a semi slow query that hits the database one time whenever a user, you know, gets the ex hits this expired cache that the, the data isn't actually in this cache. And then they have to go execute a query. But what's really cool about this execution context, wait and tell is you're just telling the Cloudflare compute to say, hey, run this promise on the background, but then respond to the user. So while this operation is happening, while this, this put operation is happening, you've already issued this response to the user and that data has already been delivered to the client. So they're able to see the most recent update um, and they're not waiting for this to happen. So this is a pretty cool feature that Cloudflare has baked into the runtime. And I actually find myself using it more and more. I'm just noticing that there are scenarios where I, I want to loosely store this information in the background and I want this operation to run after the request has been served. I don't want this to necessarily block what the user is going to see. All right. So the last example that I have of using KV stores in this project is a little bit unorthodox, but it's actually for these Google images that show up in the review card. Now, Google, they basically have this, this content URL that serves these static assets that you can use. You technically can use them. But what I noticed is when I would just basically pass in that image into the source tag, I, I couldn't fully rely on it. I, I started to get rate limited. I'd be getting, I would be getting an error code that indicated that Google was blocking that request from being made from this specific domain. Um, they probably do it just to protect their servers. And I don't know how many users are going to be using the widgets because it's going to be embedded on other people's websites. And I have no control over that traffic. So basically what I decided to do is, is I created a image proxy, which hit, hits our endpoint and then passes the actual Google review image link as a query parameter. Now, basically what I'm doing here is the exact same pattern as what we've seen before is I'm taking that URL and I'm querying against the cache to see if we have an array buffer of that image in the cache already. If I do have it, I'm going to be setting some specific image related headers and I'm going to be passing that information back to the client. And it is pretty cool that you can just specify you want an array, an array buffer back because that's one of the types that Cloudflare is able to store without doing any extra like pre-processing or, or transformation on that data structure. So now this is the happy path. Um, if you if you hit the cache, you just return that back to the user. Um, and if not, I'm just making a really simple fetch request to grab that image. This is the Google image. And then what I'm doing is I'm grabbing the array buffer from the response that I get. I'm going to be specifying those same headers. And then in the background of the request, I'm going to be saving that array buffer of the Google image. And one of the reasons why I do think it's okay to be storing these images in, in Cloudflare KV instead of like R2 or something is because you know that they're a predefined size. They're very small images and it's nothing that's going to have any type of constraint on the KV store. And then I'm going to be setting a TTL for two days. So after two days, we're going to forget about that image. I don't want to be storing these images indefinitely. Um, it doesn't make any sense to. So two days is a pretty good time for that. And then I'm going to be responding that back to, and then I'm going to be issuing a response back to the client. And then this is another really cool example of how I was able to utilize KV stores for something that's a little bit unorthodox. Like you typically don't think about storing array buffers of images um, for this specific use case, but I mean, it works really, really well. These images load lightning fast. It's able to hit the cache the vast majority of the time especially after that first load. And then each one of these images, when the component loads, are being requested at the same time. So there really isn't like any noticeable latency on the client side. All right, now that we know some great use cases for KV, we're going to walk through a few scenarios that would absolutely not be suitable for Cloudflare KV. One of the scenarios is where you have a state key that doesn't change, but you're updating the value frequently. 
we have a very simple route right here, a 10 stack route, where we're getting a value that has the exact same key every single time. We're gonna call that current count. We'll increment current count, and then we'll save it back into the cache, and then we'll re return that count to the client. I'm gonna call this route from my browser in Colorado, while at the same time, I'll be connecting to a server in the beautiful city of Kuala Lumpur, halfway across the world. I'm gonna run up the count to 70 for the browser that's in the US, and then I'm gonna open this application in Kuala Lumpur. As you can see, the data is aligned. I'm going to run up the count to 76 in the US and then refresh the page in Kuala Lumpur. And as you can see, the data in Kuala Lumpur is stale. This behavior is a side effect of how data is cached globally on Cloudflare's edge network. I'm going to fast forward the time 60 seconds and then reload the page in Kuala Lumpur. As you can see, the data is again aligned. Worker KV is an eventually consistent edge-based key value store, which makes it ideal for read-heavy workloads. When you write to a KV, your data is written to central data stores and your data is not automatically sent to every location's cache. Initial reads from a location do not have a cached value, so data reads must first read from a regional tier, followed by a central tier, finally falling back to a central store. Frequent reads from the same location return cache values without reading from anywhere else, resulting in fastest response times for KV. Now in the example that we are looking at where we were getting stale data by querying the same key, in two different locations, this was largely dictated by regional caching. This parameter can actually be controlled by passing the cache TTL when you're saving data, but I wouldn't necessarily recommend going lower than 60 seconds. I haven't seen what that looks like in terms of performance. But if you have a read-heavy workload, you can actually increase performance by going up above the default of 60 seconds. Now that said, if your workload is not read-heavy and you're constantly updating data, I wouldn't even consider using KV. A good solution could be durable objects if you're already working within Cloudflare's ecosystem. I have two videos on this that help illustrate how to use them. Now before we close, I just want to say if you're building a production system and you want to see if KV can benefit your solution, I'd recommend first reading through this document on how KV works. It gives a pretty good high-level understanding of how regional caching works and their eventual consistency model. I really hope this video helped you understand how to use KV. See ya.